Hello, and welcome back to another amplifier repair video. Today I have a Maxonics Crunch a PZX 2000.1 board here. And I'm not sure if uh, my, my longtime viewers, I'm not sure you probably recognize this board here, but this board I've had in before, um, that I personally owned, which was sold on my website. The uh, the owner uh, had a uh, shorted output happen. One of his output speaker wires shorted together, and I just wanted to go over what happens to an amplifier when the output gets shorted. Uh, so when I got it in, originally the power supply transistors were shorted. Every single one of them were shorted and the output transistors also were shorted uh, so i've already replaced the power supply transistors i got the power supply back up and running uh, that's when i decided i just wanted to give you a quick video on what to look for especially on these boards uh, when it comes to shorted uh, power supply or shorted output transistors so as you can hear that the output transistors on this are shorted so both sides the rail to rail and the low side drive uh, was shorted I have already desoldered these transistors so what I'm going to do is show you uh, the steps that from here what I take um, on repairing these boards so I just want to give you a quick view of which output drive card we're dealing with on this board. Uh, this is what you're going to find in a lot of the Maxonix uh, Class D boards, is you're going to find this particular drive card here with that single IR21844, uh, or one of these cards that has dual IR21844 ICs. So this one's just uh, using the single one there. And uh, what we're going to do is just fire up the power supply here and check the operation of the output drive card. So I'm going to get some power hooked up real quick and be right back with you. All right, so I've got the power hooked up here. So I'm just going to show you real quick the uh, power supply drive just to show you that it is functional. So here's the power supply drive for you in the upper left-hand corner. And so what we're going to do is just move on to the output card. So you will see the output drive, the, the low side drive there on the uh, scope. So we do have low side drive, um, but with these 21844 ICs, you're not going to see anything for the high side. Um, it's waiting for a transistor to be in place. So uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, just place in some output transistors. These are the IRFP250Ns, and we will see if we have rail to rail on this. So I will be right back with you. All right, so I have new uh, IRFP250Ns installed, as you can see here on the output section. So, and the power is reconnected. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this board up, and there's the relay and see what this is doing. So let's check our low side gate drive. There's our low side gate drive looking perfect. 76.9 kilohertz, about 70 kilo, 77 kilohertz. And do we have rail to rail? We do have rail to rail. And then there's our rail to rail drive there for you. Uh, about 41.4 volts um, RMS on that rail to rail drive. So we're looking good. Uh, let me go ahead and quickly hook up a 50 hertz input signal just to make sure that the relay didn't get damaged uh, during the short. Uh, sometimes uh, these Maxonics boards, when you short the output, uh, the speaker terminals, you will damage the relay. Um, I do carry uh, a pretty good amount of these relays on hand for just that purpose of replacing 
the output relay when it does burn up. So, uh, so let's see if I have that 50 hertz signal here on the output. And let's just get the scope set up here for you. And I do. There's that 50 hertz output there for you. Nice and clean. As I would expect. So, uh, just as a quick recap, it did not damage. Amazingly, I'm absolutely surprised that that 21844 IC survived. Usually when these outputs short, it will take out the uh, that 21844 IC. But it lived. It survived. Lived for another day. So, no heat anywhere. Everything's nice and cool. So, I would call this amplifier good to go, and you can see the modulation as I increase or decrease the input voltage. So, it's working absolutely as I would expect it to work. So, what I'll do is I'll just put this all back in the heat sink. Um, I'm going to probably glue this inductor down just a little bit more. It does move around a little bit. The original fault back on this board was a shorted inductor. That's why you see this white uh, protective layer here. So I'm going to glue that inductor down just a little bit more. Uh, he did say that he was running this pretty hard. So I'm going to safely assume that this is going to be exposed to quite a bit of vibration. And as we all know, vibration is one of the uh, largest contributors to amplifier failures. So... Again, I do thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this content, and I will be out with another video shortly. Thank you again. Here's something that I uh, thought I'd add to this video that's quite interesting. Is this Maxonics Crunch PZX 2000.1 amplifier, and that's how it's labeled on the heatsink as PZX 2000.1. The board is actually a Mean Machine 2050.1. Uh, so it just kind of goes to show that you just never know what you're going to find out of a Maxonics amplifier. So again, thank you for watching.